So here I am in Qt Creator and let's create our first list using arrays. Click on the new project, click on non-Qt project, click on plain C++ application. Give it a meaningful name. I'm gonna say my list implementation using arrays. You can uh, change uh, the default path if you want. I'm gonna leave it as default. Click next couple of times and then finally click finish. I'm gonna remove the command line arguments because I'm not gonna need them for this demo and remove the C++ here statement as well. Let me increase the font size so that you can easily see it. Just above the main function, I'm gonna create my class. I'm gonna call it my list. And then in the private section, I need uh, three things. One is the um, dynamic array, so I'm gonna say int star, I'm gonna call it list. The second is a constant, which is going to specify the initial capacity for this array. I'm gonna specify five for simplicity. And then I'm gonna say, what's the current size? I wanna keep track of the current size, I mean the number of elements currently stored in the list. So I'm gonna declare a variable of type and called size. So these are the data members of uh, my class called my list. And then in the public section, I'm gonna give it a default constructor where I need to do some initialization first. I'm gonna create a dynamic array and the size will be the capacity. So capacity. So what this line does, it's going to create an array on the heap because I'm using the new operator and it's going to create an array uh, based on this capacity. That means five. So to store five integers, uh, an array will be created on the heap and the new operator returns an address of the first location that I'm going to store in the list, which is a a pointer of type n. And then I'm going to specify the size to be zero. When there is nothing in the list, I'm going to say the size is zero. And after that, um, so now let's give it a add member function. The return type of that is going to be void because we are not returning anything, but we are inserting uh, an item into the list. I'm going to call it add and I'm going to specify a parameter of type element which is going to take an integer when I call this method add on my list object and insert that into the array. So what we can do, how do we specify the index? So I have declared the size and initially the size is zero so I can use the same variable to increment the indices and I'm going to do that by I'm say list size and assign the value element so at index zero because I've initialized size to be zero in the constructor so when I create the object from my list class the size will be zero and index zero I would insert the first value and after that I'm going to increment the size by one so I'm going to say size plus plus and semicolon. So just that we don't need anything, just two line member function. And the second, I want to give it a member function called print that when I call on my list objects is going to print all the values currently stored in the list. So the return type of that is gonna be void. That means it doesn't return anything. I'm gonna call it print list. And for aesthetics, so that our list displays the values in a form like this, list, colon, then the brackets, uh, and then the values, for example, 100, comma 200, comma 300. I, I want to, uh, to, to implement my print list method in such a way that it should display the list in this particular form. So for that, I'm gonna first see out list colon, then the bracket open, and then semicolon, and I'm gonna copy this line and bring it a bit down and I'm gonna say that I'm gonna close this now because when I print all the values, the bracket will be closed and then, and now inside these two statements, I'm gonna iterate over the array and print all the values. So I'm gonna use the for loop and I will initialize a counter variable called counter. Its value, initial value will be zero and I'm gonna say if counter is less than the size, which indicates the number of elements currently stored. So if my list contains 10 values, for example, in this case, it's going to be less than five. So let's say if my list contains three values, the value of the size will be what? It will be four because initially the size was zero. When I insert the first element, size will be incremented by one. 
one i increment the second value the size will be incremented again so we have to iterate this loop um, when the size uh, when the counter is less than the size not equal to the size so keep that in mind and then after that in the body of the for loop i'm going to just say see out list a uh, uh, counter and then i'm going to put a space after that so that's it so when i call this function what it does is going to first see out on screen this string and then it's going to display each value of the array and after every element it's going to put a space and when it finishes then i'm going to close the bracket so i'm going to display the um, see out the closing curly bracket and then i want to want to move the cursor to the next line so i think that's it for our implementation let me just review what i just did first i create a class i call it my list and in the private section of the class i have declared three data members the first is called a pointer which is list and the type is end and then i have declared a constant and this is by the way how do you declare a constant in c++ you put the const keyword just in front of the data type and by convention it's a good practice to capitalize every letter of the constant variable it's easy for other programmers to know um, within no time that it's going to be a constant because the name of this particular variable has been capitalized and i have an assigned the value five and then i have declared a variable called size of type end just to keep track the number of elements currently stored in the size and i'm also going to be using it as an index value and then in the constructor i've initialized the size and i've created a dynamic array called uh, list and the number of elements will be based on the capacity which is five and the size is zero then i have implemented an add a member function which takes an integer argument it first does what it it says insert a value at the list of size that means at index zero currently size is zero and then assign the value at that index so this is the index this is the element and then i'm incrementing the size plus plus because the next time add will be called it's going to insert one one uh, position and then assign the element to that and then increment the size by one and similarly the print is going to print all the values and i'm iterating over the array using the for loop i'm starting from zero less than size counter plus plus and then list counter zero uh, object of this particular particular class that I've created, I'm going to call it list. I'm going to say list dot add. I'm going to call the add member function. I'm going to assign the hundred value, and then I'm going to call it again to insert two hundred, which is the second value at the second index. And then again, let's put some values there. And let's uh, we want to display the values of this list. So I'm going to say list print list. That's why I've given it uh, this particular member function. So whenever I want to see the list of values within my list, I'm going to call this function. Let's compile this program and then run it again. This is your first uh, list implemented using arrays. So for example, what if you want to check the underflow and the overflow of my list? What if the list is already full? So I think we have to give this object, my list, uh, another member function uh, and whose name will be empty and full. So let's implement the empty first. And how do we check if the list is empty? Very simple. The return type of this is going to be Boolean. Yes, because it's going to return true if the list is empty or it's going to return false so i'm going to say return <coughs> size equals zero if the value of the size is equal to zero that means there is nothing in the list um, then this particular equality operator will return true and that true will be returned by this particular member function you could have implemented this in a, a naive manner but i think you are uh, you already have studied two programming uh, languages, so you are good enough now to understand. Otherwise, I could have done something like this. If size equal equals zero, then return true, else return false. And because these, these are the single statements, I don't need the curly brackets. So let's check this. So before I add anything to my list, I want to see if the list is empty. So I'm going to say empty and i'm going to less dot empty it's going to return one for true and zero for false but i want to see the value true or false if the list is empty so for that we have to use uh, something called bool alpha just before calling this function what it does that it's going to convert that zero to false 
and that one to true so if the function empty returns zero that means false that zero will be converted by bool alpha to the word false and if it returns one that means true bool alpha will actually convert that one to true so let's see this if it returns true this that means our implementation is correct because I'm calling this particular member function before adding any element to my list. So compile this program and now run this program. And as you can see, the list is empty and it's returning true because in the beginning it's empty. We didn't add anything before calling this member function. What if you want to see the overflow? And for that, we have to first fill in the list. So I'm going to say list.add and let's say 400 and remember that the capacity of my list is 5 as you can see in the private section of the class and I have to insert one more just to fill this list and I'm going to say 500, right? So I'm going to go and create another member function, the return type of this is going to be full because it checks the overflow. So I'm again say if the size is equal equal to capacity uh, that means return true because the list is full uh, because the size is actually the index I am incrementing whenever I add an element to the list I increment the size by one so initially it was zero then one two three four five when it comes to five it should return true otherwise it should return false so I'm gonna say else return false so let's check the overflow after I print the list. And I think it should be full at this very moment because we have already added five elements to our list and the capacity of the list is five. So let's uh, give it a try. So let's see out and I'm gonna say full column bool alpha. We want to see the word true and false and list.full and end l. So save changes, compile the program. And let's run the program to see the output. And as you can see, in the beginning, the list was empty. It was true. Then we inserted five elements into the list using the print list member function. And then finally, when we say list.full, it says it's true that the list is full. So here is um, a gotcha. And that is that the our implementation of the list has this problem that if we specify the size to be five, it remains five throughout the entire life of the program. What if you want to insert more elements here? And can we do this to dynamically increase the size of this uh, list? Yes, we can. And that is the implementation of vector in standard template library. And we're going to see that in the next couple of lectures. Thanks for watching. See you next time.